Welcome to the hot mess side of YouTube. Okay, so I have thought about how I was going to start this video. I have thought about, about how I was going to map out this video. I've thought about the steps I was going to take, how I was going to edit this video. I have made it so complicated and I'm not going to do that because I have so much to do. This is going to be, and I'm saying it right now before I even get started, to date my most productive video I have ever put out there. We're not only doing deep cleaning we're doing spring cleaning we're doing decluttering we're doing a little bit of spring decorating we're going into the cracks and crevices of my home and making sure it is wiped down and ready for this next year because while i did do a really good job of spring cleaning last year i didn't do it to the level that i'm going to do it this year i want to do it bigger and i want to do it better and i want to do it cleaner so we're not going to overcomplicate this we're not going to think about where we're going to start. We're just going to start because sometimes that's all you can do. Sometimes you're not mentally prepared for what you got to do. Sometimes it's overwhelming. So you just start. We're just going to start. We just got back from our trip to Georgia. So my house is atrocious. I just went to Aldi's yesterday and got groceries. I didn't film that grocery haul because we just have so much going on right now. I just wanted to jump into spring cleaning while I was motivated and ready to go. I wasn't really motivated. I had to motivate myself. Sometimes we got to do stuff when we're not motivated. <laughs> so we're faking it until we make it. <laughs> but I didn't do a grocery haul. You guys will see a lot of the groceries as I put them away, as I clean out my fridge. We got a ton of stuff for super cheap. I also picked up a little bit of spring decor from Aldi's. I'm not a big seasonal decorator. I like my house to look one way till fall and Christmas decor so it's not going to be nothing extravagant pink blues eggs Easter eggs everywhere I think that's beautiful in other people's homes but for me I just like it clean and clear until the big seasons it helps me stay clear up here and that's the main we want a clear head <laughs> we don't want a cluttered head so the spring decor that I did pick out it can flow through the summer because it's it's not like pastels or anything it's just nice little flowers touches to the house nice little floral touches to the house um colors that can work for both spring and summer and just all year around if i wanted them to and it's not a big decorate with me either because i'm not trying to bring more stuff in the home when i'm trying to take more stuff out i'm gonna stop prolonging this because that's exactly what i'm doing y'all know it <laughs> let's just start somewhere The room I've chosen to start with is my kitchen because it is by far the most hardest room to keep clean in my trailer. It might rival my bedroom because my bedroom does tend to get out of hand. I, I struggle really, really hard with my bedroom, but my kitchen is second to worst, if not the worst room in my house. When it comes to cleanliness, I just find it's a catch all. We do a lot of our homeschooling here in the kitchen. We do all of our eating here in the kitchen. It's one of my most heavily trafficked areas in my home too. So it's just a catch all for everything. I'm using this table since it's all cluttered up. I'm using it as sort of a station. So this is where I'm going to have everything laid out that I need to put up in my kitchen. And it's not going anywhere until it's put up in its home. That way I'm taking something unproductive and chaotic like a messy table and turning it into something productive using it kind of as a stepping stone. So pretend this is baseball and my table is the dugout is where all the plays are made and everything like that. That's what I'm doing. I'm keeping it in this one area so I don't look over anything and so that I can stay on task. I think that this is the first time I haven't done a grocery haul in two and a half years. <laughs> I've never gotten groceries and not showed you guys. I did an Aldi one too at that. I, you guys have been begging me to go to Aldi and I finally go to Aldi and I'm not doing an Aldi haul. I got this little wiener dog toy for the dogs at Bell's Outlet. It was about the only thing I could afford in that place. <laughs> I went there because we don't have one in Tennessee. So when we were on our trip, I saw Bell's Outlet and I was like, I've seen this place all over YouTube. Y'all, a shirt was about all I could afford because their home decor is outrageous. I found that little dogs for my wiener dogs though. So I could bring them back home with a gift and not come back empty handed because I knew they were already going to be mad at me that we were gone and we didn't take them to the beach with us. <laughs> Along with using my kitchen table as the dugout, as I just called it. <laughs> I'm also going in my little routine that I do which is my orbiting routine I orbit around the room so that I don't go everywhere because in my mind I'm in the dining room but I really want to get over there to the sink and do the dishes and then I'm back over to the open pantry I'm everywhere so I have to keep myself 
in line by doing my orbiting method. And I just start at one area of the room and just continually go around the whole perimeter of the room and tackle everything inside that perimeter. I have to do it that way because my whole life is a squirrel moment. So I have to, I don't have a choice. I'm making my own cleaner. I told you guys I was going to get through all my harsh cleaners and stuff and I couldn't wait. I still have a few more harsh cleaners I need to get through and use up. I couldn't wait any longer to make my own little spray with vinegar. I was supposed to use the distilled white vinegar, but I didn't have it. Look, I'm getting the spray thing to work. I'm so excited because those things give me the hardest time ever. I used apple cider vinegar, the same ratio of apple cider vinegar and the same ratio of water, just like a one to one ratio. And I added a little bit of Dawn dish soap. So it's not 100% uh, you know, clean and what's it called? Vegan? Nope. That's not it. What is it called? Fresh? Nope. Um... Hold on, be right back. I gotta stop this voiceover because I've gotta think about what it's called. What is it called? I'm back. Natural. It's not 100% natural. I had to think on that for five minutes. <laughs> it's not 100% natural. It does have the Dawn dish soap. But apparently apple cider vinegar is extremely antibacterial. That's what Google said anyway. My Siri is my backup. I'm always, I talk to her more than I talk to Shane. Seriously, throughout the day, I'm always asking her questions. So she said it was antibacterial. So I went ahead and used that because I was out of the white distilled vinegar and it didn't leave the area sticky or anything. I just assumed it was going to leave it sticky, but it didn't. This is embarrassing, um, but we're friends here, right? We're best friends. So y'all just, if you ever come over to my house, just don't open my microwave unless I give you the okay. Because nine times out of 10, this is what my microwave looks like on the inside. And it's just somewhere that I forget to clean regularly because it is out of sight, out of mind. So apple cider vinegar is supposed to be extremely antibacterial. Check out what it's doing to this stuff in here. I'm about to turn the microwave on and let it just run with the apple cider vinegar mixture in there. But look what it does whenever I spray, just spray it on the nastiness. Just spraying it on there cuts that stuff like no other. Let's turn it on. Does it smell grody in here right now? Yeah, but it's like a fresh grody. I don't know why I ever thought I needed to clean with like Clorox and all these chemically products. This vinegar cut that sucker like karate chopped it. I'm gonna call that mixture I made bacteria be gone. That's what I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna write it on the bottle because I was in shock. It just swapped out of there. And it, it's not even the fact that I turned the microwave on, which I did, I let it run for a couple of seconds so that it could heat up and kind of like get some moisture in there and make, make it easier to wipe out. But I even use this stuff you guys will see later on in the video in my fridge. My fridge is cold. It doesn't get hot, so there's no moisture in there, right? It's still cut that like no other like i mean it just wiped off bacteria be gone get you some this right here is stained so it's not coming off at all like it's part of the microwave now I'm just clearing out my sink here so that I can put all of my storage containers and my cereal containers that go in my open pantry because that's what I'm focusing on right now so that I can put them in here and sanitize them and wash them down really good because they haven't been washed in a while. I've just been transferring over cereal and stuff and I need to get in the habit of washing them in between even though cereal pretty much when it's there and it's gone it's gone and all that's left is a few crumbs and stuff I still want to get in the habit of washing it in between just to keep it nice and fresh 
So I'm clearing out the sink right now so that I can transfer those over to the sink and get them cleaned. My elbows look like Grandmother Willow, by the way, right now. Listen with your heart, you will understand. No, y'all gonna be as tired as I am looking at this beat up sink. <laughs> I'm so excited to get me a new sink. Like I say, I always say I do not regret painting this spray paint, <laughs> this sink white because it let me know I did not want white. I really thought I wanted white, y'all. I did not want white. So it let me know that I didn't want white and I want my stainless steel back or maybe a cast iron, but I don't think I have the capacity to upkeep a cast iron sink because I've heard they're really really hard to upkeep so I think I want to go back to my stainless steel but I definitely want a big sink I have a lot of big dishes as you can see there to the left I've got that big old mixing bowl and I've just got big things in general and especially when I pull out the shelves in my fridge and I'm doing all these containers I need a lot of sink space so here soon I want to be getting a new sink. I, I know y'all are tired of looking at the beat up sink. I am too. Trust me, I see it more than y'all see it. <laughs> but it serves its purpose and that's what really matters in the end. Cosmetic things are secondary to is it functional? And for right now, it is absolutely functional and I'm grateful for it. Even though we're getting close to Easter, that is not rabbit pellets <laughs> in my sink. That's cocoa puffs. They don't even disintegrate. That's how bad for you they are. They don't even disintegrate in water. It probably takes like 37 years for it to digest. Along with spring cleaning, I'm going to get my house organized too. So I got these little nifty things at Walmart. They're the Better Homes and Gardens. These are for pasta, but we're going to keep snacks in there, like popcorn and stuff. If we're getting our house clean, some we are getting it organized. These are the most affordable ones I can find at Walmart. Some of them cost half of my house payment. <laughs> we wasn't going that route. And they also look like they would hurt your toe if they fell on it. And we all know I'm prone to dropping stuff around here. So I went with the Better Homes and Gardens. It's just as good and it's even kind of fancy. You flip it like that and it seals that sucker. Nothing ain't coming out. But be careful, don't lift it by that like I did because then it, it'll all come out. It's cool how I like it. It seals it though. That's neat. I'm gonna wash these out so we don't get like salmonella or nothing. I'm always saying we're gonna get salmonella from the most oddest things. But you know, you don't ever put stuff right into your containers after you get them from the store. Always wash some things out. You don't know what rat was crawling on them in the warehouse. You don't know whose hands are touching them things, stalking them, I'm just saying. If I'm worried about the the state of somebody's hands, then y'all should be worried about the state of somebody's hands because I'm not, I mean, I'm trying to be clean natured, but you know, you know. So wash your stuff out before you put your stuff in it. Pretty sure all of y'all already do that or know to do that. If anything, I'm just reiterating it for myself. <laughs> you don't know if somebody picked a booger and then picked it up and thought about getting it and then sit it back down and then look now you got a booger a booger contaminated storage container nah i'll pass <laughs> they could have picked a wedgie or anything we'll pass question though would you rather moment would you rather somebody pick your storage bin up your storage container up with a uh, hand that just picked a booger or with a hand that just picked a wedgie. I'm thinking wedgie because you got that extra layer of clothing there to kind of, well, well they have butt sweat. Uh, you got that extra layer of clothing to kind of protect you from all the stuff inside of the clothing. I'm thinking way harder than I should on this, but I'm going to say wedgie because a booger, I mean, pick your nose. If you pick your nose, you're going to find a booger. I don't care who you are, so... We're gonna say, I'm, I'm gonna say wedgie. I'm gonna say wedgie. I saw our final answer. I'm gonna say wedgie.
actually a utensils caddy that I saw at Walmart and I thought, ooh, I could use that. So I'm using it for our breakfast bars and our snacks. A lot of the times when we're doing homeschooling throughout the week, we just grab something simple for breakfast. If I've made bulk pancakes or something like that, we'll grab for those first. But if there's really nothing else to grab for and we've ate through all the pancakes and stuff, then we'll grab one of these breakfast bars for breakfast and then also for a snack too. So I saw this little caddy thing for utensils and thought, ooh, that would be really cool to store that in because then it would make it really easily accessible for the kiddos and they could just grab whatever flavor they wanted. So that's exactly what I'm doing. In the bigger part, I'm adding some gummies. I've been really making a point to recycle lately, so I'm just quickly breaking down these boxes so that I can take them outside and recycle them. I'm just using this basket that I already had to store my buns, <laughs> like my hamburger buns, my hot dog buns, all my buns buns <laughs> in, the, in there. I have a ton of bread and don't think I just went crazy. I'm actually planning on doing some bulk freezing up of some homemade French toast. That's what I'm going to do for breakfast this following week. So that's what all the bread is for. I'm going to make a crap ton of French toast. I don't know if you guys have noticed or not, but back behind there in the back of this open pantry, the backing is kind of wonky and that's because we've had some electrical issues back there with the lamp up here, this wall lamp on the right. So we've had to go in there and kind of fix some stuff. I'm actually gonna have to replace that one because it had a short in it. So that's why it's all wonky back there. We need to keep it open so that when we do replace it, we have an access point that we can easily do that and there's no point in tacking it back to the wooden shelves if we're just going to take it back off here in a little bit once my other wall lamp gets here from amazon any detail like this i come across like some paint on my lamp i made sure i went ahead and took care of that that way i wouldn't have to go back because if i make a mental note i'm not going to remember it we're finally finished with the open pantry it's been dusted it's been wiped down sanitized everything's been organized so now we can move on to the next area of the kitchen which is the back door area and the actual pantry right there beside it
organizing your home is really, really expensive and it can get overwhelming. So as I'm going through here and I'm organizing with things, well, a few things that I've bought, but most of the things that I've already had, I'm making a list of things that I need to think about organizing in the future. That way it's not overwhelming in the now, but it's at least written down so I can refer back to it whenever I go to organize other areas of my home. Continuing our orbit around the sun, <laughs> our orbit around the room, we finished with the actual pantry, so we're moving on to the refrigerator. I'm cleaning inside and out, behind and underneath, all over, on top, everywhere around this fridge because I haven't cleaned it out in a hot minute and I haven't cleaned out from behind it in a long while. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through and just redirect everything that I have in the freezer, which isn't a lot. It's really expensive. I don't even know why I have that little chest freezer over there in that other corner because it's really expensive to even have that thing because I think I need to keep it filled and then I end up not filling it because food is so outrageous. So I may actually end up getting rid of that at some point. I, I would like to keep it, but I have not been able to keep it full. I haven't. So I don't know if there's even really a reason to keep it. If not, I guess I'll rehome it to somebody. I'll give it away to somebody who actually needs it around here. <laughs> Someone who can actually keep it stocked, I guess. <laughs> I'm cleaning out my fridge with the vinegar and I feel a lot better doing that because it feels better not having all those harsh chemicals around our food. It does smell nasty. I mean, if, if you like the smell of vinegar, you might like it, but it smells to me like I had a pickle party and an Easter egg coloring party on the same day. That's what it smells like to me. And I'm just not a fan of that smell. <laughs> I don't know. You know that uh, Ariana Grande perfume? It's like the pink one. I don't know what it's called. Shane always says I smell like a jar of pickles when I use it. That's what it kind of reminds me of, that smell. probably should have soaked these but I've never washed off I mean I've rinsed off here and there you know you go to eat a strawberry and you rinse it off real quick like three second rule underneath the faucet like I've done that before but I've never actually just taken the steps to rinse off my fruit and vegetables and then pack them in a ready-to-go container so this is new for me I should have probably soaked them I've saw a lot of people soak them on TikTok with like baking soda and vinegar and stuff I might move on to that. It is a little bit overwhelming for me. It doesn't come easy for me to do these things. It will one day if I continue to try to do these things and try to be like this mom that does all this stuff, but it's just not who I am like right now. So rinsing it off is a win for me, but I would like to get to the point where, where I soak our fruits and our vegetables and like get them really, really clean and all the harsh stuff that they spray on them off of there.
I will not lie to you. I felt so bougie when I walked out the Ross with these things. They're only three bucks, but I've never had none of these before. I always said I wasn't a big fan of, you know, the clear container storage and stuff. And while I still am not going to have everything organized in clear containers around my house, that's just not relatable to me. I just, there's no point in it. And food wise, there is a point to it because I'm a very visual person. And if I can visually see what we have in the fridge and not double buy things as much, then that's a good thing for me. So that's what I'm hoping this does because I get in the habit of buying too much or too little of the things. And that's bad management, food management on my part. But I'm hoping clear containers like the egg containers and the food containers on the open pantry will really help me keep an eye on what I have and what I need. Myself to hold my hand, standing in the shadows of where we have been, sleeping with your back facing me. I know, I know, I know this is enough. Baby, pull me closer. This one love. voiceover over this part of the video and other parts following where I'm talking because the video was lagging. I tell y'all I'm always running nowhere fast and I, I literally mean that even I was going faster than the audio could even keep up with. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it happens in long videos so it's fine i washed out those big buckets as best as i could in my little sink i'm telling shane right now that i really need a new sink <laughs> i'm talking him into it which it doesn't take much talking into because he don't like washing stuff in that sink either but he went and rinsed them out in the bathtub and i made sure they didn't touch the bottom of the bathtub because that's a little bit gross <laughs> but we had to rinse them off some way and the sink just wasn't cutting it so i had him go in there and i had him rinse them off in the bathtub and now i'm going to put everything back in the fridge and i'm trying to hurry because i don't want any of this to spool I don't want any of it to ruin and I don't want it to get warm when I first started YouTube one of you guys confused me I don't even know if you're still here even if you've been around here for a while you'll know exactly the situation I'm talking about because somebody told me I wasn't supposed to keep my fridge open while I cleaned it and I spent I don't know how long trying to figure out how I could clean my fridge without opening it <laughs> I know the trolls have fun with me because I just go along with it I'm going to show you how good this apple cider vinegar cuts this stuff this is in the fridge so there's no heat and moisture to like loosen it up Bam! Like it just wipes off. That stuff just wipes off. I'm impressed. You and me are moving. Make sure we get through this. Let's just keep on dancing as one. You and me are moving. Make sure we get through this. Okay. Woo! Who is this? So, freezer, pretty much everything stayed the same. Wiped out these. These are my little trinkets that the trailer park kids have gave, gave me, like talky. I freeze everything anybody ever gives me because I want to keep it forever. Got some stuff in here. Got my meat patted out and everything. Getting it frozen up. Frozen vegetables down there. Very simple. Nothing down here. Up here, this sucker is clean and it looks fancy. I mean, come on. <laughs> Who is this? Who is this? I saw those at Ross for like $3.99, I think, and I had to get them. Okay, so got my condiments up here. Got the drinks, Shane and the kiddos drinks right here. 
got these little nifty things at the Ross for the eggs. I thought that would help me keep a visual of how many eggs I have because I'm always thinking I have more eggs in the carton than I actually have. So I don't get them at the grocery store and then I end up not having enough eggs. So this makes it visual so I can see how many I have in there. It feels better to have that there and then I have some eggs up here for backup for whenever we go through those eggs. I can just supplement them with these eggs and put them in there. Really cool. Then I got all my protein shakes in this little sucker right here. Thought that looked pretty nifty. And then I got sugar, milk, butter, biscuits, flour because I don't want any worms, you know. <laughs> got it all down there. Got this as my meat and cheese drawer. So we've got our turkey, our shredded cheese, our cheese slices, and our hot dog wieners right there. Down here is just some extra shakes that wouldn't fit in my thing here. Over here I've got my already washed fruits and the vegetables. It's a leaf vegetable, I think it is. Got it right here, and then right here is the meat that I'm not going to freeze because we're going to eat it within the next few days. And I've never put my meat in the drawer, but I thought about it, and I've always put it in the bottom. And I almost always have something that goes bad, then I have to throw it out. And I hate wasting stuff. It's my biggest pet peeve ever. So I'm hoping putting it here in the drawer will help me um, eat through it and not forget that it's in the fridge. Not forget it that I have it. It looks plain and simple, but I'm so happy with it. I've never had my fridge look this good. Nanny came over and wanted to say hi to you guys. I wish the audio had stayed in this because it was adorable. She was asking y'all how you were, like you were going to answer her like right then. <laughs> she loves you guys and I love it so much. But she came over to say hi and check out my refrigerator because I was super excited about it being organized. Nanny is my A1 since day one. She's my biggest cheerleader. I know y'all ain't seen Nanny in a while, and a lot of y'all always are asking how she is, so I thought I would have her say hi to you guys so that y'all could see her. I'm cleaning off the top of the fridge, and I'm not storing any of my big kitchen gadgets up there anymore just because it feels more cluttered when I have stuff up there. I like to leave the top of my fridge as clear as possible. I don't want anything up there if I can help it. So I'm dusting up here with this nifty little Dollar General duster that I absolutely love. It extends. It's so cool. I hope I never lose it. And I hope the dogs don't attack it because I really like it. This is one of my favorite. And they probably will attack it just because it is my favorite because they know those things. And they do it just to hurt me sometimes. <laughs> but I hope they don't get to this one. After I dust it, I'm just wiping it down with my little bacteria be gone <laughs> spray and just making sure that I wet dust it after I dust it because I cannot dust good. I'm the worst duster ever. Don't ever ask me to dust something because there's still going to be an inch thick layer of dust on said thing. So, so I, everything that I dust, I try to go back behind if I can reach it and wipe it down. If Shane's home, then I always have him wipe it down like in the high places. But if not, then I just dust it and dust it a few times for good measure if I can't reach it to wipe it. But I like to wipe it down. I'm cleaning off my fridge with this, uh, it's, it's not called Wee Man, but I call it Wee Man. The Wee Man spray and I'm making it really, really shiny. And then I'm moving on to the cabinet. So in the cabinets, I'm taking up my contact paper, the shelf liner that I have. I've had it in there for over a year. It's the Pioneer Woman one. It's coming up on the corners and it's scratched up and like tore up a little bit. So I'm just replacing that with some new cabinet liner. I know it's kind of off-putting to hear me talk on this side and watch me talk over here, but I'm trying to fix this video as best as I can because if I can't fix it and do it like this, then there is no video because it's all, it exported a mess. So here I got some new plates. I got the, just the regular Walmart plates. I think it's like $1.97 plates. And the reason I did that is because a bunch of you guys said if I downsized on my plates and on my laundry it would make my life so much easier and I got to thinking and I was like you know there really are only six of us in here we only need six plates six bowls you know in case we want to have spaghetti and salad <laughs> so I mean I don't know why I have all these dishes and all these clothes so you guys really put it into perspective of how easy I would have it not easy obviously there's still work to be done always as a mama but I don't have all of these dishes because they're just piling up because we just keep getting a new dish when having less dishes dishes would motivate us to wash those dishes as soon as we eat on them. So that was a very good idea. I had the glass Pioneer Woman ones, but they've broken. I don't even have a full set anymore. And they, it was really hard for the kiddos to, I'm doing this because I cut my girl's hair and I'm itching. <laughs> I had hair all over me. But it was really hard for the kiddos to hold those glass plates whenever we eat in the living room. And we did that a lot because, you know, a lot of the times my table isn't cleared off. So we eat in the living room a lot and they're trying to struggle to hold them. And especially Cammie, he struggles with the whole them. He don't like the glass plates. I try to always give him plastic ones if I can because he prefers them. So I thought about getting lap 
desk to do their school on and for them to eat on but I was like I don't have anywhere to store those and I if I don't have nowhere to store it I don't want to bring it into my house I'm at that stage in my life where I'm so serious about decluttering and even when I mess up and I bring stuff into my home and it just only for it to turn around and have to leave and go back out I'm still in the mindset of I want less less is more because I have come to find out with decluttering all these decluttering videos once I get an area clean and decluttered I am the happiest I could possibly be my mind is clear I don't have to worry about opening the cabinet and something falling out and knocking me out and me being knocked out cold for a few hours I don't have to worry about none of that so I went to Walmart and just got six plates six bowls it was super affordable super cheap and I'm going to rehome my plates I think to Nanny Nanny asked about them a while back she'd be really been wanting them and she made a few comments about it so if she wants them I'm going to rehome them to her and if not then I'll rehome them to whoever wants them it's not a full set so if I have a neighbor or something that's just been really wanting Pioneer Woman plates or something, I'll give them to them. But that is why I got new ones. I don't normally buy new ones to replace old things. But in this instance, I really needed the plastic over the glass because it just, it helped, it benefited our family more than the glass did, especially having small kids. I mean, some of them had already been broken. I don't think I had a single Pioneer Woman bowl left and I started out with four and it, it's not like you can just go to Walmart and then replace those. These cheap ones, the plastic ones, if they get messed up, we can just go replace it for $1.97 or something like that. It'll be super cheap to replace so I don't have to worry about dropping one while the the kiddos are putting the dishes from the dishes from the sink to the dishwasher or trying to load them up into the cabinets I don't have to worry about any of them getting broken or them falling on the kids toes hurting them or nothing it's not even a quality over quantity kind of thing because I know I say that a lot and obviously the glass plates they're they're better quality than these cheap plates but in this instance these plates serve my family better than the glass plates. The glass plates, obviously, we can eat off both of them. I mean, we could eat off of a rock if we had to, <laughs> but, but these are just better. They better, they work better for us. I picked the lighter neutral ones too because neutral always looks tidier for some reason, so they look tidier up in the cabinets. Look at my little ball jelly made me of Play-Doh. I thought that was so stinking cute. I was so adamant on decluttering a huge chunk of these cabinets. I didn't even let it pass through my hand and think about it for too long. I picked it up and was like, do I need this? Do I really need this? When's the last time I used this? Do I use this a lot? And if the answer was no, then it was gone like a fart in the wind. I was not playing around this go around. So I'm just decluttering everything. I'm taking everything out, seeing what cups I have lids to. I want to get rid of the majority of the cups. I want to get rid of the plates and just things that I didn't use, little kitchen gadgets that I haven't used a lot, that I haven't used in forever, that I've never used at all. I wanted to get rid of those so that it could look neat in these cabinets. So I wouldn't have to worry about opening it and something falling out on my head. Everything looks neat and tidy and it all has a home. That's what I was going for. Shane is the contact paper king. He has done contact paper so much on this channel that it just comes second nature to him. I suck at it though. So when I have to do it because he's not here to do it for me, I hate it. But I couldn't wait around for him to be able to do it for me this go around. I was trying to get this done as fast as possible because this is only one part of a very big project. And it's already taken me so long to get to where I am right now in these cabinets. So I couldn't wait. I couldn't waste time. I had to just jump in and do it. And I did do it. It just took me forever. And I went through a crap ton of cabinet liner. <laughs> About a year ago, a little over a year ago probably, maybe a year and a half ago, I put Pioneer Woman shelf liner up in my cabinets because a bunch of people, that was in a time where everybody wanted to know why I didn't have color in my house. <laughs> as if they didn't, as if they couldn't tell I had extreme ADHD and color affects ADHD. <laughs> but so I put Pioneer Woman so I could have color behind the cabinets <laughs> and I locked it that way. But I needed new stuff because my Pioneer Woman was had taken a hit. So I took myself to the DG and just got me some cheap shelf liner this time.
I'm getting these bowls and these plates that I got to replace my glass ones. I'm getting those washed up so that they'll be ready to use whenever we pull them out of the cabinet. Like I said, no booger fingers or wedgie fingers over here. We're good. <laughs> so I'm getting those cleaned off real good so that I can just go ahead and dry them off and stick them up in the cabinet and they'll be ready to go. this chair brand right now that they'll be the first product I ever sponsor. <laughs> I was like, if this thing can hold me up for as many escapades as I've taken stepping up on this thing to reach stuff, this chair, it's like aluminum too, y'all. It ain't nothing fancy. <laughs> so I was like, hit me up brand, but no, I'll do it for free. Y'all, if you want some quality aluminum chairs, <laughs> then go hit up this brand. I don't even know what brand it was. I got these forever ago, but they do hold me up real good. And look at Tater over there sunbathing in the window. That's her window. I don't I don't even bother to wipe off the nose smudges off that window anymore because she just puts them right back on there. That is her window right there. Maybe it's cause we are Got time and we're wasted. Got no plans for the night. I love how you look at me. Feel a lot nothing to lose. Can we say it tonight? Cause I don't 
attention's gone now And that you won't stay here Keep looking back, don't wanna forget ya Yeah, I wanna do it all again So I keep pushing it wide I think I'd have better luck just doing it over the sink. <laughs> so we're just going to do it over the sink. <laughs>
it's time for me to rotate the, my happy heifer <laughs> utensil holder. Sometimes I'll turn it over and I'll hide the cow, and then sometimes I'll bring it out and I'll bring the cow. I'll bring the heifer out. <laughs> bring the heifer out for a little while. Everybody asked me where I got that, and I actually made it with my Cricut. I got the croc thing itself uh, from a friend, though, off of something like Craigslist or something. I'm pretty sure that's where I got it. Down here, I wanted to only store the big necessary stuff. So I'm storing the air fryer down here just to give me more counter space for throughout the day. And it's right there so I can easily just grab it up and put it on top of the counter when I use it. Because I do use my air fryer quite a bit. I use it about as much as I use my stove top and my oven. So I'm keeping my big mixing bowl filled with like my muffin pans or my muffin silicone thing and stuff like that. And then my stainless steel pot set is going down here. I'm slowly learning how to cook on stainless steel cookware. I never thought I would know how to do that because I thought I would just burn everything in it but no it's actually there's a science to it and I've about got my master's degree in it baby I'm keeping my frequently used stoneware up there in the top though I'm going to wash out my dishwasher with this a fresh dishwasher tabs it's the first time I've ever used these and I didn't even know they existed until I started using these in my washer because you guys recommended them so then I saw these and I was like oh yeah and I didn't even know my dishwasher had a filter thing either until you guys told me so I got that out of there and I'm washing it down
I could have went in with baking soda like I did last time and washed down the inside of my oven. But if I'm being honest, the apple cider vinegar did just as well. There are like burnt things down in my oven and underneath my stovetop that just will not come out because I, you know, cooking's a learning curve. <laughs> Let's not judge. <laughs> cooking's a learning curve. I, I used to burn a lot of things. I'm getting better with cooking as the years go on, but I used to burn a lot of things. So there's a lot of stuff that's just not coming out of there. It's just like cemented onto there because it's been burned on there so many times so i didn't bother with the baking soda because the apple cider vinegar did a really good job wanna be the person that you call up when you're down wanna be the first who knows all of your deepest secrets can i be the one who wakes you up before you miss your ride because i want to be close to you and i want to show you something new you gotta know Every day I got your back, yeah, you can count on me for that. So put your hand in mine, I will be there every day. When you're sick of the climb, I will make sure it's okay. I know you didn't ask for any of this, but we reach for the sky. Cause we're flying colors now. Just a little bit for me. Three fourteen. That's why I like to shop at Aldi, son. You help me pull these out real quick. You know what? I like to shop at Aldi, baby. I like because you get all the good deals there, and baby. that's going to be good for a week, baby. You know what? Baby, can you hear me? Did you hear me? Can you hear me? It lasts a whole week after I buy it. Actually, a week and a half. I need you to pull the refrigerator. What you talking about? The pork chops. What pork chops are we talking from about? Aldi. We're supposed to be working on this fridge. Yeah, but from Aldi, the pork chops are lasting longer than the ones that we eat at Walmart. Well, hub hallelujah. That's awesome. Can you help me pull this out? <laughs> what? Can you help me pull this out? <laughs> <laughs> Shane and I are having a little mini date night. <laughs> He's watching me spring clean basically and jumping in whenever I ask him to. I just am one person where when I'm spring cleaning or deep cleaning, I like to like do it myself and I just, I want to be left alone and do it myself. So he was standing around watching me and I had him put some country, <laughs> I had him put some 90s country on the TV. And if you know anything about Shane, he hates country music. He cannot stand <laughs> country music. He says it's all about mullets and trucks and girls and women. He says and it's about trucks and women. <laughs> That's what he says. And it's all sad, but it's really not. 90s country is top tier too. So he broke down and put on some Joe Diffie for me. And that's his love language right there. Breaking down and putting on country for me when I ask him. That's his love language. There ain't nothing better than some Joe Diffie though. I'm telling you. Uh, Y'all missed it because I was singing and everything on this little clip right here. I was slinging. I was singing and slinging. I was slinging that music and having me a time. I will try to leave as much as the actual footage in here as I possibly can because it, it was gold. <laughs> but I was having me a good old time with that 90s country oh, music. Oh, hold on. Did you put fried What song is he going to start out with? Joe Diffie. Joe Diffie is top tier country. Joe Diffie. On a hot summer night. What? When it comes to him, I feel. Yeah. Shane and I hanging out like this are like the best moments of my entire life because he really is like my best friend on the whole planet. I've never had a person where I'm as close to as I am him, so he's always a good time. All we did was like hang out together and then like make some pork chops and listen to 90s country music and it was like one of the highlights of my life. 
And I wanna show you something new You gotta know Every day I got your back Yeah, you can count on me for that So put your hand in mine I will be there every day When you're sick of the climb I will make sure it's okay Oh, you didn't ask for any of this But we read for the sky Cause we're flying colors now This thing is one of the coolest gadgets in my house. So you put soap in it. It's for like scrub days, but you can use it for other stuff too. You put soap in it and you can squeeze it like the Dawn upside down ones like I'm doing here. You can squeeze it from the bottom or you can set a sponge on top and push down and it sets up the sponge. It's one of the coolest gadgets in my house. I'm taking my time to be I got my little coolest gadget in my house there sitting on my trivet that I got at Aldi. That color, I call it lemongrass. I don't know what color it really is, but I love it. I have that clear jar over there too. I've had it for forever and I just put my pods in there so that they're on top of the countertops and it just makes it easier. These two floral arrangements are from the Dollar General, the vases and the floral. And then I got this cute little chalkboard from the Dollar General too. I didn't want to go spend a fortune. I didn't even want to go to Hobby Lobby and really spend a lot of time on spring decor because I don't usually do spring decor. I just wanted little touches of color and I don't even think I could thank spring for that. I think I can thank the beach house we went to because I mentioned the blues I really, really loved. So I think that's where the colors in my house this spring came from. That's kind of what ignited that. That's why I wanted those colors and stuff. I'm using the by the pool. 
wax warmers because I'm ready for the summer smell. So I got my coconut smell going throughout my house. Got mixed with the vinegar. It actually smells very fresh and clean. I'm digging it. The little trivet I showed you guys beside the sink. I don't know why I just wanted to call that thing a sun trust, like a sun trust bank. <laughs> the little trivet though is a part of a set that I got at Aldi. So you had to buy them separately, but they all went together. And these little three things, they go along with it. I felt this floral little mini wreath at Aldi too. And it matched the floral that I got from the Dollar General. So I've got some of the floral here, like here on each side of my sink. That's from the Dollar General. And then some of the floral, like you see on the counter here, is from Walmart. I got this little yellow rimmed vase flower at Aldi, but I didn't like those pink flowers. I wanted to put white flowers in there. So what I did is I just cut, I just pulled the pink flowers out because they were super glued to the bottom. And I super glued my own flowers to the bottom there. <laughs> Pushed down on it for a little bit until it, the glue set. And voila, I had me a little vase that I really liked with that yellow in there, but with the flowers that I wanted inside the vase. I also made my own little arrangement too in a little bluish, greenish, chillish planter that I already had that was just sitting in my closet. I didn't want to go crazy because I didn't want to make this a huge spring decorate with me because that would just be more decor. I'd have to find somewhere to store. And I already have enough fall and Christmas decor. I can't store any other kind of decor except for stuff that can be used for the rest of the year, like all year round, minus the holidays. So I just picked up a few little things, but mainly just used things that I had. I found a tool in Shane's tool bag that looked like wire cutters. I don't know if it's actually wire cutters, but it weren't like wire cutters. So I found that and I just trimmed around the flowers and kind of got all the little flowers that was sticking up too far. I just trimmed them down as well as like pushed like the eucalyptus leaves. I don't know if the eucalyptus actually grows with this kind of flower, but it does in my universe. So we're just putting these two together because they look really pretty together and it brings a subtleness to that white floral. So it's not like in your face, like the two ones beside my kitchen sink, but it's like a more subtle, I just like it. It's simple, subtle, very, very small touches that make a big old difference in here. I ain't so sure about that jelly bean sign that one of the Dollar General ladies taught me into getting, but we shall see. And then true to mom life here, I'm making my own accelerated reader test for one of the kiddos. They finished one of their history readers early, so I had to hurry up in the middle of all this, come up with an AR test. It's not a part of their curriculum. I just like to do it because I feel like them answering questions about the books that they read help them maintain what they read and kind of remember what they read. It did for me anyway in school. So I just kind of implemented what my AR test in school kind of did, the accelerated rear test. And I just kind of took it from the computer back in elementary school to paper and kind of use it as a tool to help the kids remember what they read. Um, wiping down the bar here. One of you guys told me when I first started my channel, you guys said, clean from top to bottom. And that way you're not wiping crumbs onto a clean floor. And I have carried that with me. It taught me so much. And that's how I've cleaned ever since I heard that. I've got to try and find a place to put all of the stuff I'm decluttering and getting out of this house. My house is destroyed other than that side of the kitchen right now. That side of the kitchen has taken me days to like detail clean. Because my mind struggles with detail cleaning. I... I can, I see details when I'm walking around. Like, I'll just randomly be doing dishes and I'll look around and be like, ooh, that needs to be cleaned. But I cleaned in that area the other day. I just couldn't, like, see that area then. So my mind picks and chooses when it wants to see details. So actually forcing myself to follow a list that I created in order to make sure I get everything down pat was really, 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 really hard <laughs> for me. But we did it on that side, so I'm confident I can do it with the rest of the house. It just is time consuming. Deep cleaning is time consuming. Spring team, spring, spring. <laughs> spring cleaning is time consuming, but it's even more time consuming when you have a, a thing where you really struggle with details. And, and y'all know that that's a huge struggle of mine. I really struggle with details. I can do something all day long, but details are where it gets me because I just naturally don't see them. Maybe I do see them. I just, I, my mind doesn't pay attention to them. I don't know. I don't know the science behind it. Coming back full circle, rotating around the sun right now in this conversation. <laughs> I've got to find a place to put all of the stuff that I'm decluttering so I can get y'all a good after shot. Uh, it's quite a bit. I did not expect to declutter as much as I am decluttering and get rid of as much as I am getting rid of, but I'm happy with it. My cabinets are clear. I mean, they are clear. My pantry cabinet, my dish cabinet, under the sink cabinet, it's all clear. Only necessary things that I absolutely need are in there. I got rid of some really hard stuff. I got rid of some stuff that I just bought a while 
like a couple of weeks ago. I got a bunch of mason jars to do overnight oats. Come to find out, if you eat overnight oats for seven days in a row, you get really sick of it. <laughs> we'll be doing that for a while. <laughs> so I'm not letting them sit in my cabinet just so we can drink out of them and leave them laying all over the place and we have more dishes piling up. I'm just gonna count my losses and get rid of them now. Sometimes you gotta do that um, when you're determined. Sometimes you make mistakes and you gotta fix them right off and it's not fun and you lose money and, but if it helps your mental health and if it helps your home to run the right way, especially me being a homeschooling mom, stay at home mom, work at home mom, I guess you could say, cause YouTube, with all of that, I need to run my home as smoothly as possible and I'm not very good at that. So trying to be very good at that and trying to make sure my house is clear, so my mind is clear, and it's easy to function. Getting my home clear will not only allow us to function better, it'll also help with a routine as long as we can keep the routine of putting things back to where they go. Um, everything has a home in that part of the kitchen now, so as long as we can stay true to that and keep everything in its home and take everything back to its home, then I think this is really going to benefit us as, as a family in a whole. But right now, I need to go back around the sun one more time and get back to this point <laughs> and say, don't know where I'm putting everything. I think I'm going to store everything um, right in front of the door, the living room door. That way, after I get my after shot and show you guys what we're getting rid of, I can just take it on out of the house and get it out of the house while I can because otherwise, if it sits for a while, it starts, starts getting cozy and it starts feeling at home and it will overstay its welcome. So we're going to put it at the door, the side of the door, so that we can just easily move it on out of here. I'm going through my candle and wax melt cabinet and just really decluttering the candles that I just am um, eh about. If I'm fanatic about a candle, I'm fanatic about a candle and it ain't going nowhere. But if I just have kind of mixed feelings on it, then I'm just going to get rid of it. And I'm also going to go through my wax melts and do the same thing. I'm going to put what's left in piles. So I'm going to try to go from tallest to shortest when candle wise. And then I'm going to do a pile of Yankee candle wax melts, a pile of Mainstays wax melts, Better Homes and Gardens wax melts, two piles of my Scentsy wax melts a pile of random wax melts and then Febreze wax melts and I'm putting them all into a pile. Then on the bottom, I'm gonna put all my air wicks, my Febreze scent smeller plug-in things, all my little plug-in things I'm gonna put down at the bottom just so it's more organized and I don't have to dig through. My problem is I come in here and I'm looking for a specific scent and I dig through all these and I just leave it like it is. So I've got to stop doing that in order to keep this tidy like I'm getting it tidy because otherwise it's just all for nothing. And this took me a hot minute to tidy up this cabinet, this end cap. I don't want all that to be for nothing. I'm holding on, if almost gone. Someday I know I finally make it through the gates. Just have to wait. You whisper to me.
I'm wiping down the table. This table is so scuffed up. We have got to fix it soon. It is, it's, it's, it's bad. It's an eyesore, but it like back to the sink. It is completely functional. So I am grateful for it regardless. Nonetheless, I'm about to get down on my hands and knees and give the floor a good scrubbing. It has been a very, very long time since I've hand washed my floors. And while I do love my mop and I think it does an awesome job, ain't nothing like getting down on your hands and knees and scrubbing your floor. <laughs> yucky pond water I just had to use apple cider vinegar and this batch and not the white distilled vinegar because I ran out of that I used less of that in the last batch so it looks like the same water but it's new water This is what's leaving this house. Obviously, not my ottoman, but this right here is what's leaving my house. This because we're still gonna do part three. Binksy, <laughs> we still gotta do part three of living room makeover, which is this wall right here, and we're doing something totally different. So this is gonna be moving on to nanny. All of this is leaving, and that's just the kitchen. <laughs> what? We got rid of boxes we broke down, and this isn't even counting the first load of recycles that I took outside and then the first bag of trash that I take outside so we got a bag of trash here some recyclables that I still got to break down and then the rest of this is being reowned all of this this is a bag of candles and wax melts yes I parted with some wax melts who am I <laughs> and then my tumblers yes I don't need 500 tumblers the plates I already explained those and then just odds and ends and stuff you know that was just taking up space that I didn't really need uh, those bins right there they're destroyed so they weren't really doing any good underneath the kitchen sink so we're getting rid of it. We're not holding on to stuff this year. 
I cannot believe we got all of this out of one room. I mean, two rooms if you consider the dining room and the kitchen two separate rooms. Mine is like one room, so I don't. But all of that stuff from one room. And we were able to deep clean the sucker. And we were able to get some spring decorating done. Just a little bitty bit. But it made a big old difference. The white floral I am loving in here. It completely transformed the kitchen area. I'm digging it. And I love how clean it feels. And it makes me motivated to continue with this series. We're going to continue to get the daggone thing done. We're going to move right on into the next few rooms. I'm going to do a few rooms at a time. So the next one will probably be the main living area, the laundry room, and the hallway. And then the bedrooms and the bathrooms. We're going to do the daggone thing. Woo! You see this face right here? We did the daggone thing. This video has been by far the biggest video as far as filming I think I've ever done in regards to cleaning. It's taken me days. To film. I know it's gonna take me days to edit. <laughs> and we're just one really big room, technically two, because dining room, kitchen, really big, two really big rooms into this thing. We're not stopping here. We're gonna continue this series with the next video. We're gonna knock this house out of the park when it comes to spring cleaning. If you guys are getting a jump start on yours like I am on, then get up and do the daggone on thing with me. Save my video for the morning if you don't like cleaning in the evenings. I prefer to clean in the evenings, really because I don't have another choice. <laughs> I, I get as much done during the day as I possibly can but in the evenings that's when I get a lot of my cleaning done especially now that I've been doing better about keeping my home up kept still not up kept y'all saw the before right but <laughs> it's better than it was <laughs> and a lot of that I owe to cleaning in the evenings because it's just the time that I have in my day to clean I also have been doing big cleaning sprees on the weekends too and that's like family led so the fa whole family pitches in and it's helping me out a lot I get a lot of stuff done on the weekends that way especially when we're not doing projects or not out of town or doing something like that we get a lot done on the weekends because all of us are here and we can all pitch in so i'll see y'all in the next video we're gonna knock some more of this house out of the park I'm gonna continue doing deep cleaning until the entire trailer is done if i can do it i know you can do it i never spring cleaned until i started youtube i didn't know how and i still don't know how we're just learning it's learning curve <laughs> i'm kind of teaching myself and making lists so that i can remember uh to do certain details i know i probably missed some stuff and that's okay if I remember it or if I see it in the middle of doing something else, I'll just add it to my list. I'll just go on and do it so I can get it out of the way. It's no problem. Just start. That's the hardest part is starting. Once you're started and you get into that rhythm, you're good as gold. I wanted to show you that it is absolutely possible for you to get your spring cleaning done, even from a homeschool mama of four. And I um, don't have a lot of time. I do not have a lot of time. I know I am home all day long, but I'm really not home all day long. Like, I'm not stationary. We also have a lot of other things that we have to appointments and stuff like that. So I don't have a whole lot of time. If I can do it, you can do it. I promise. Even if you got the really hard job of being a working mama, y'all are superstars. <laughs> if you've got that job where you work outside the home, you can do it. I promise. Just don't overwhelm yourself and give yourself little, do like little pieces. So think of it as like a Kit Kat, right? You don't eat the whole bar at once, right? That's, you shouldn't. <laughs> don't do that. Don't be that person. <laughs> but you take it and you break, break me a piece of that Kit Kat bar. Break you off a piece of your house and get that part done. Don't worry. If it's not a whole room, it don't have to be a whole room. Would you like to know what I did here? I did one section of this kitchen. I did this main wall right here in one day. I did the other part of the kitchen the next day. I started on the other part of the kitchen the next day. And then I think by day four, I was starting on the dining room. Break you off a piece of that Kit Kat bar do it that way you might have to break off smaller pieces especially if you're working outside the home you're a single mama single working mama my gosh y'all are superstars if you are doing that and that's your reality for right now do little pieces do cabinets a cabinet at a time and then once you get done with the cabinets the floor sweep them up one day declutter on the weekend whatever you got to do to get it done i know you're going to get it done because we're mamas and we just got to get it done we don't have a choice but to get it done i also want to show you guys that you can decorate cutely and it doesn't have to look Chip and Joanna Gaines. I'm not saying anything bad about Chip and Joanna Gaines. They are amazing. But Dollar General, for a little of nothing, you can add some pops of colors for spring. I learned going to the beach house in the last video that y'all have seen. I learned going to the beach house that a little bit of color is okay. I think I can get away with a little bit of color in my home. Not overwhelming because I do like my neutrals. And I like it to be clear. You know, I've told you guys that. I'm not a fan of color in my house. But these muted colors and these pastel colors for spring and summer, I think I can handle. We'll have to see, but how I got around that without adding a ton of springy colors in my house is the white floral. 
that is different. I don't do white floral in my house. So that gives me that little bit of spring that I really, really wanted to add into my house. Uh, paired with the light blues, the dusty blues, and the lemongrass yellow green and the pale greens. I even brought just a simple touch over here. Y'all, you don't have to clutter your home with decor. The one piece that I am a little bit uncomfortable with, the one part I am uncomfortable with is this jelly bean sign just because it has Easter eggs on it and I'm not, you know, I don't really, oh. Uh. So I'm thinking about doing, I don't know, maybe doing something with the Cricut to cover up those Easter eggs. It's not a thing that it's got Easter eggs on it. I just want it to be able to go through the summer and I don't want to have to put it up after Easter is basically what I'm saying. <laughs> So I don't know what I'll do to that. I, I'm not sold on it. Like it is one of the mo more uncomfortable items that I put in here for Easter. Even though I didn't put a whole lot. It is one of the most uncomfortable items I put in here. So stuff like this I can do all day long. Muted greens, lemongrass greens. I don't even know where I got that. White floral, dusty blues. I can do that all day long. But you hand me a teal jelly bean sign and I'm going to cringe a little bit. But yet again, it brings me happiness. I don't know. It's like a Jekyll and Hyde situation. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. I hope y'all have a blessed morning. Even not whatever it is, wherever you're at. Know that I love you. But Jesus loves you more. See I'll see y'all later.